math is a class in which we learn how to think, and one of the ways we learn how to think is ways of organizing our thoughts. So sometimes when there's a very difficult question that's being asked, we can learn ways of organizing it and writing it in a simpler way. So this guy is counting up all of the numbers up from 7 up to 15, but his friend realizes that he could state the same problem in a much more concise way. This is the sum of all numbers of the form k squared over 3, starting from k equals 7 and going all the way up to k equals 15. So the guy on the left didn't even finish, and the guy on the right said the entire sum more succinctly. But the question is, what is this number k? Where did k come from? Does k have some special significance? of all the letters in the alphabet. In some alternate universe, maybe they use n instead of k. Does it make it a different sum? No, it's exactly the same sum. The point is that k was just a placeholder, a dummy, holding the place of a numbers that counted up from 7 through 15. So we would call k or n the dummy variable. Actually, if they were on another planet, maybe they'd be saying something more like this. So, we just expressed the sum from k equals 7 to 15 of k squared over 3, and we found it to be 383. Suppose I gave you another sum to compute. Suppose I gave you the sum from l equals 1 to 9 of l plus 6 squared over 3, and I told you, you have five seconds to compute this sum. Can you do it? Did you succeed? The answer is 383. Why? Because it's the same exact sum. All we did was transform to the dummy variable. If you put L equals 1, to get the first term you'd have 7 squared over 3. Just like the first term of this sum is 7 squared over 3. Every term is the same. We just did the transformation L equals k minus 6. And how did we figure out that if we use the transformation L equals k minus 6 that we have to go from 1 to 9? Well, make a little table of values of k and L. And if k is going from 7 to 15, then L, which is defined as k minus 6, goes from 1 to 9. And now we have written a sum that was originally in terms of k into a sum that's in terms of L, and it makes no difference to the answer. The answer is 383. It has nothing to do with k or L because K and L are dummy variables. Okay, so do you understand what a dummy variable is? If so, here is a test. Which statement of the following statements is false? And see how quickly you can identify the false one. Have you found the false statement? You have. It's the third statement. It's got to be false because the answer has j's in it. j is a dummy variable. It's just a placeholder for the numbers from 27 through 39, and therefore the answer can't possibly have anything to do with j, and that's how you know that it was the false statement. Now let's go back to talking about limits. Limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Guess what? x is a dummy variable. It's just a placeholder. It's holding the place of numbers in the two-sided neighborhood around 3. And as those numbers get closer and closer to 3, this expression gets closer and closer to some constant. And that constant has nothing to do with x. x is a dummy variable. I could replace it with any other letter in the alphabet, and it would mean the same thing. So here's how you would compute this limit the proper way, and I like it if you write it out that way. And here's the way that I don't want you to write it. This is the bad way. Can you see what's wrong with it? In this statement, we have a limit in which x is a dummy variable is said to be equal to an expression that has x in it. And that's nonsense. So when you write your limit work for me, please put limit statements in front of every line that requires it.
Now let's talk about how we could use variable substitution, substitution of the dummy variable to evaluate a limit. For example, if we had the limit as x approaches 3 of x cubed minus 27 over x minus 3, we could do it simply by factoring x minus 3 and then canceling the factors of x minus 3 and then substituting in 3 and the answer turns out to be 27. Or we could say let u equal x minus 3. Then x is u plus 3. We make a little table. All we need is the value 3. When x is 3, u is 0. So this becomes the limit as, as uh, u approaches 0 of u plus 3 cubed minus 27. And then if I multiply out u plus 3 cubed, expand that, and then the, the last term cancels with the 27, and I get a polynomial in u, and it doesn't have a constant term, so I can divide out the u, and that's what gets rid of the 0 over 0 problem. And it seems like it's a little harder than it was to do without variable substitution. So you may argue, why bother using variable substitution? Well, I was just illustrating how the tool works. Let me show you now some examples of, of problems where you need to use that tool. First of all, you've already used the tool because we've used situations where we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 3x over 3x. And I told you that that limit is 1 because it's a sine u over u form. But really the proper way to write that out is to say let u equal 3x, to notice that when x is 0, u is 0, and then the limit statement becomes the limit of sine u over u, and now you can apply the theorem. So I don't need you to write all that out, but I want you to understand we've already implicitly been using u substitution, variable substitution and limits. Now here are some problems that are more difficult, and I think you'll see that variable substitution can be very helpful. Here's a 0 over 0 form limit involving trigonometry and an algebraic function. In order to perform this calculation, you need to apply the theorem about the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. But you don't have a variable approaching 0, so the only way you're going to be able to apply that theorem is through a variable substitution where the variable approaches 0. See if you can finish that problem on your own and compute the limit. Next example. Limit as x approaches infinity of x sine of 1 over x. This might look unfamiliar, but I'll tell you what will make it really familiar. Suppose you make the variable substitution u equals 1 over x, and then as x approaches infinity, u approaches 0 from the right. That's right. As x approaches infinity, u which is 1 over x, approaches 0 from the right. Do you find that to be confusing? We'll just take a look at some values of x and u. Try x equals 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Those are values of x that are approaching infinity. Fill in the rest of the table, and I think you'll see that u is approaching 0 from the right. And this is a reminder that limits as x approaches infinity are really one-sided limits. So when you do variable substitution, you'd better get a one-sided limit for your answer. So those are your two examples to try. See if you can figure them out the rest of the way. And write to me if you have any trouble with them.